Okay, so now I'm going to explain more about finding the independent loops in a network. Um, so there are algebraic ways of finding independent loops, but there's also a very nice visual way of finding independent loops. And this is that we can count how many edges need to be removed in order that no loops remain in the network. So here I've got um, a very simple network with just four treatments and each of the edges represents comparisons for which we have trial data. Okay, so to remove a loop, we can take away one edge and then we're left with, with one loop rather than two. And we can take away another edge and we have no loops left in the network. So this means that because we had to take away two edges, we have two independent loops in the network. Okay, so now I'd like to ask, um, we're going to run another poll and I'd like to ask you to think about how many independent loops there are in this network, which is similar to the last le network, but it just has one more edge. Um, so, I'll give you just, if we have 10 seconds to look at this, and then we'll launch the poll where you can answer how many loops, how many independent loops you think there are in this network. So um, the most popular answer was three with 41% of people saying three. Um, and then yes, equal proportions have said four, five or seven. Um, and yes, 3% um, have said two okay so i'm just going to now move on to my next slide so so okay so the correct answer was that there were three independent loops but it's it's not easy <laughs> um and yes the reason for showing you this is to show that it's it's not very easy to identify the number of independent loops so there are seven different possible loops in the network um so the answer seven does make sense as well, um, but there are only, th only three of these which are independent. And we can work that out by, by finding out that if we take away three edges, we can get rid of all the loops in the network. Um, and the way of identifying the loops is also that when we take away an edge, we break a loop. And if we write down which loop we've just broken, then that's how we find the, the, the names of the loops. But it's, it's, not, it's not very straightforward, um, even with an example which is as small as this with only four treatments. Okay, um, so thanks for taking part in that poll. I'd now like to show you how it becomes more complicated when the network gets bigger. So this network has 12 treatments. Um, and we're going to run another poll, and I'd like to ask you how many independent loops you think there are in this larger network. Um, so, yes, let's again have 10 or 15 seconds for you to look at the network before we launch the poll. So, yes, nearly everyone has taken part. And um, so we have a more even split across the answers this time. And um, the correct answer of the number of independent loops is actually 31. Um, but yes, you had so little time to look at it and, it and it was a difficult question. But the point of this really was to show you how very quickly it becomes difficult to identify the, the number of independent loops. Um, and if, if you were to try and work out which independent loops there were by hand in this network, it would be very laborious. You would have to go through breaking one loop at a time and writing down which loop you've just broken. And I think it would be very easy to make mistakes. So this is why we needed to have an algorithm um, which helped us to identify the independent loops in the network. Okay, so thank you for taking part in, in that poll. And um, I think we're shortly going to pause for questions, but just to show you, fortunately, there is a simple formula for working out the number of independent loops in a network, which I didn't show you before. So in a network which only includes pairwise trials, if the, the network includes K treatments and N contrasts, which are informed by trial data, then the number of independent loops is N minus K plus one. 
Um, so yes, it's fairly easy to, to count the number of independent loops, but less easy to identify which loops they are. And this formula is equivalent to counting the number of edges that need to be removed in order that no loops remain in the network. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit later how if the network includes multi-arm trials as well as pairwise trials, then counting the number of loops becomes more complicated. OK, I think now might be a good time to pause for questions if anybody has any questions so far. So there is one question in the chat. What does it mean to handle treatment symmetrically? OK, um, yes, good question. Um, so this means that if we were to reorder the treatments and um, go through the same process of fitting our model again, the treatments would be handled in exactly the same way. So yes, if, if it was a, if it's asymmetric, then the ordering of the treatments affects what happens when you fit the model. And potentially this could cause problems. So yes, we wanted to make sure that our model handled all of the treatments in the network symmetrically, regardless of where they came in the ordering. Mm 